Okay, so we had started this problem yesterday, um, taking the derivative of x squared sine of x cosine of x. So we had three different terms that were being multiplied together, um, and we were taking the derivative. So we got the first step down. Now we need to simplify. <coughs> okay, so this was when there were three terms. So what I did, I just went through it methodically. So I did the derivative of the first term was 2x, and I multiplied it by the other two terms. And then it plus the derivative of the second term, the derivative of sine is cosine, and multiplied it by the other two, x squared and cosine of x. And then the last one, I multiplied the derivative of the third term, the derivative of cosine being negative sine of x times the first two terms. <clears throat> so um, let's look at simplifying here. Now, <clears throat> um, we're going to use some trig identities that you've probably never seen before. Um, and honestly, I'm not incredibly concerned about you memorizing them. It'd be great if you did, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so we're going to use what we call double angle formulas. So this first expression here, I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to put the x in front, and I'm going to pair the 2 with the sine of x and the cosine of x, which we usually don't do that. The coefficients always come first. But the reason why I do that is because 2 sine of x times the cosine of x is equivalent to simply the sine of 2x. So we can simplify that expression there. But I'm going I'm to hold off on that for just a second. I'm going <clears> to <throat> work on simplifying the other terms as well. For the second term, we have cosine times cosine. Well, whenever you multiply something by itself, then that is squared. So we've got cosine squared of x. Notice we put the square between the trig function and the angle. <clears throat> and then for the last term, we have sine of x times negative sine of x. So I'm going to put the minus in front, and sine of x times sine of x, similar to the cosine, we've got sine squared of x. Okay, so um, as I mentioned just a second ago, 2 sine of x cosine of x is part of a double angle formula that is equivalent to the sine of 2x, and 2x is the angle of the sine function. <clears throat> There's a reason for it. I'm not going to delve into it. Just know that 2 sine of x cosine of x is equivalent to the sine of 2x. Now, for these second two terms, they have something in common. They have an x squared in common. So I'm going to factor out the x squared from both terms. Now you are familiar with our Pythagorean identities. Remember the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1? Well this is very similar to that but it's not exactly that Pythagorean identity. This is actually another double angle identity. Cosine squared minus sine squared is equal to the cosine of 2u. <coughs> So we have x sine of 2x still in the front plus x squared cosine of 2x. Cosine squared minus sine squared of x is equal to the cosine of 2x. I've underlined what I've replaced here. <coughs> okay. And technically, we could take it one step further. They both have an x, so we could factor out that x if we really wanted to. But at that point, we would just kind of look at the answer choices and, and see, see what they've got going on. Now, again, I'm happy if you get that Really, I want you to get through uh, to the blue line, okay, um, where you simplify the cosine times cosine and the sine times sine. Um, honestly, I'm not overly concerned about you replacing things with the trig identities. 
Um, if you want to memorize those, it's probably a good idea. I'm not going to force you to do that at this moment <clears throat> because they don't come up that often, okay? Um, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind. Okay, um, let's step away from the trig for a second and let's just look at another polynomial function. Um, our function is defined as x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4 and that quantity is squared. Now, a couple of things that we need to be careful with with this. Okay? First of all, we can't just apply that squared to all of our terms. Okay? That's not how it works. Um, and we can't apply our power rule to this overall expression um, because there's other stuff inside the parentheses there. So really we need to look at this from the perspective of well, when I am squaring a polynomial expression, I need to multiply that polynomial expression by itself. <clears throat> so now we're looking at a product rule problem. It didn't look like a product rule to start with, but when we express it as x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4 times itself, now it's a product rule. So let's apply our product rule, r prime of x, and yes, I want you to get in the habit of using this notation, okay, because you need to know what you're writing on your paper. Um, this next line is going to be where I take the derivative, okay. So my product rule says I take the first and I multiply it by the derivative of the second, so the derivative of my second term is just using the power rule, 3x squared minus 10x plus the derivative of the first, well guess what, that's 3x squared minus 10x because it's the exact same expression as the second one times the second. Now Obviously, there's some simplifying that we can do here. I don't want to multiply this all out. What I do want to do is I want to factor one of these terms out. Now, they both have the same term, or you, you can look at it this way. Actually, we don't necessarily need to factor it out. We've got x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4 times 3x squared minus 10x. We've got that plus itself. Yes, the order's reversed, but it's the exact same expression. So if we have two of the exact same expressions, we can just write that as two times, I'm going to write the binomial first because we typically we write shorter expressions before longer expressions. Okay, we had two of the exact same expression added together, so that means that we just have two of those expressions. And that's it. That is the derivative, okay? That is the derivative of this function in factored form. Now, if those had not been exactly the same, then we would have had to try to factor something out or, or multiply something out there, okay? But they were exactly the same, so that means we just have two of them. All right, um, this will look familiar when we get to the chain rule. Um, there's actually another way that we can take the derivative of this uh, function r of x, but we'll get to that in a couple days. Okay, um, the other thing that I want to talk about today is the derivative of the natural exponential. The natural exponential is e to the x. Okay, e to the x, we did some stuff with that in pre-calc. You probably did stuff with it in math 1, 2, and 3, or you should have. Um, but we're going to talk about the natural exponential. There's an interesting thing that happens with the natural exponential, e to the x, it is its own derivative. Now, I could go through the proof. I'm not going to. Um, but all you need to know is e to the x is its own derivative. So if our function, if f of x is equal to e to, x, e to the x, then f prime of x is equal to e to the x. It's a very simple function to take the derivative of. So we can apply all of our derivative rules just like we've been doing. Um, with e to the x as our function. So if our function, uh, 
for example a f of x is 3 e to the x 3 is just a constant multiple there so the derivative of 3 e to the x is that constant times the derivative of the function well the derivative of e to the x is e to the x so the derivative is the exact same thing as the original function very very rare and it really only happens with your natural exponential function. We can combine it with a polynomial. If our function is uh, x squared plus e to the x then dy over dx just switching up that notation there. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So our derivative is 2x plus e to the x. can combine it with trig functions. g of x is equal to the sine of x minus e to the x. <clears throat> the derivative of sine we learned yesterday is cosine. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. There was a minus sign in front of that so just bring down the minus and you're good to go. So the derivative of g prime of x is cosine of x minus e to the x. And last example, let's do a product rule, <coughs> excuse me, product rule problem with this. Our last function is y equals x times e to the x. Okay, x is our first term, e to the x is our second term, so y prime is the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, plus the derivative of the first, the derivative of x is 1 <coughs> times the second. Notice those two terms have something in common. When they do have something in common, we want to factor it out. They both have e to the x, so we'll take out e to the x, and we're left with x plus 1 for our derivative.